Hi, welcome back to Maker Mindset. This is the fifth and final step in a series that is going over the process of building an Ender 3 printer. If you never built a 3D printer, or if you recently built your printer and you're having problems with it, then this whole series is tailor-made for you. So let's finish this series with an exclamation point. On step 11, we are going to attach the spool holder. Attaching the spool holder is no rocket surgery, but as you can see on the 3D animation, Creality has suggested that we should install the spool holder a little closer to the center of the printer. However, experience has taught us that we should install the spool holder as close as possible to the right leg of the printer. For this task, you need to pick up the two M5 T-nuts, the two remaining M5 8 screws, the plastic spool holder arm, and the steel bracket that will connect the spool holder to the printer. We'll begin by putting only one screw on the steel bracket. Pick up one T-nut, put it on oriented this way, and turn it a couple of times. I have seen other people mounting the bracket this way, but you should mount it the other way around. Otherwise, you run the risk of having the filament spool getting caught on the bracket and possibly causing a catastrophic print failure. We should also install the spool holder as close to the edge as we possibly can. For this task, we'll need the second largest hex wrench from the ones that came with the printer. Now, I turn the printer on its side, leaning against the filament box, because that's the best way to fasten a screw that is connected to a T-nut. If you try to turn the screw and convince the T-nut to turn sideways while the printer was standing up, you would have such a hard time <laughs> that you might end up throwing the towel. Don't tighten this screw too much right now. Now, with the printer back in the upright position, put on the second screw and attach the remaining T-nut. Push the bracket as far as it can go to the right before tightening the screws. Remember the cap that we left out in the last video? It's finally time to use it. Feels firm. It's time to pick up this spool holder plastic arm. You see those grooves? They should be aligned with the notches on this circular shaped retainer. Put the spool holder arm through this hole. Connect the retainer with the flat side facing the spool holder arm. And start turning until you hear a click. Now let's go for the last step. On the last step of the assembly process, we are going to connect the electrical cables and the bolding tube. As you can see on the 3D animation, this being the last step is going to be pretty easy. It's just very long, but there is nothing complex about it. So we are going to attach six electrical connectors and also the bolding tube. We will also put on the plastic retainers for the bolding tube couplers, both on the extruder as well as on the hot end carriage.
Each of the electric cable connectors come with this yellow tag featuring a letter. This letter will help us figure out where each cable connector goes. We can start with the larger connector with the letter E, which indicates that we are supposed to connect it to the stepper motor for the extruder. Now we will install the smaller connector featuring the letter X. It should be plugged on the X axis limit switch. Now we are going to work with the larger connector that also features the letter X and we are going to plug it to the X axis stepper motor. Now we are going behind the printer and put these two yellow connectors together which are going to establish an electrical connection between the power supply and the motherboard. Pick up this other larger connector with the letter Z and plug it to the Z-axis stepper motor. Pick up this smaller connector here, also featuring the letter Z. And plug it to the Z-axis limit switch. Now it's time to push the bolting tube into the bolting tube coupler located on the extruder. You should make sure that the bolting tube is all the way in. Pick up one of those blue plastic retainers that came with the printer. This plastic clip should go around the collar of the bolting tube coupler and prevent it from accidentally releasing the bolting tube. If you are a perceptive person, you may have noticed a little plastic hand coming out of the extruder that was designed to help us with cable management. So, in order to use it, we need to pick up one of the zip ties from the ones that came with the printer, put it around the cable mesh and bring it to the location of this little plastic hand. Now pull the zip tie pretty tight. And push it inside of this little plastic hand. Pick up the flush cutter that came with the printer and trim the zip tie. Just perfect. Now turn the printer around and go to the hot end carriage. Pick up another one of those plastic clips and wedge it around the collar of the Bowden tube coupler. As I said before, this will prevent the Bowden tube from being accidentally released by the Bowden tube coupler. Finally, the last cable is going to be this collar ribbon, which is attached to this black connector. The connector should go into the last door out of the three. They all look the same and they will all fit this connector. But the monitor will only work if you attach it to the right door, which is the last one. That's it. Everything is done. Now the proof is in the pudding. We will first connect the power cord to the power supply. 
Next, connect the power cord to the electrical outlet. Time to remove the protective film from the display. I love doing this. Fingers crossed. Let's fire it up. Yes, that's great. The printer is on and it's ready for bed leveling. That's all folks. This first series is finished and your printer is fully assembled. I would appreciate your likes, subscriptions and somebody throw me a comment. I need encouragement to continue doing more of those videos, okay? I'll see you guys next week, God willing. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to watch this series from the beginning, you can click on this link here on the top. And at the bottom, you have a link to a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks will be the best fit for you. So, we'll see you next time.